Tonight on the TTRPG Flip Through, we are going to talk about Tangled Blessings. Welcome to the Cursed Academy, established in 1053. So this is a solo or duet uh, journaling game. And you role play as a member, a prodigy within this Cursed Academy. Now there are some other flip throughs and actual plays here, but I want to do a full flip through of the entire book. Offer my thoughts here. And you see I also have um, some tarot cards here, so I'll provide some examples of how gameplay uh, operates as I flip through it. And um, this is a tarot card driven journaling game. Uh, and these are these are some of these original uh, tarot cards here. There's that devil staring out at you with the pentagram. Perfect. So let's flip through this um, and uh, let's do it. So this is Tangled Blessings from uh, Mothwin Productions from Cassie Mothwin. Uh, and this was part of uh, Zine Quest, I believe, in February of 2023. So uh, a little over a year old now. So uh, open this up and it starts off with tables. Love to see the back and front cover being used for tables. Uh, it gives you a ghost generator here with some great descriptors of previous lives, where it haunts, why it haunts, a creature generator with some wonderful, I love that the, the two main descriptors are type and then skin. And there's a nice little creepy element there, what it preys on and what it dislikes. And these are very, you know, this sets the tone. There are nice um, varied things here like limericks. It could like dislike limericks or it could dislike silver. So, uh, you know, a wide range for you to grasp on there and create creative uh, writings from. Because remember, this is a journaling game, so what you need is good prompts that spark your imagination so that you can write those ideas down uh, or and maybe with a friend. Uh, so here we go. We start with our intro page here. has a little uh, due date card there by Cassie Mothwin. And your table of contents uh, gives you a nice section of how you play so it goes through a lot of that before bringing you into the second part which is really the bulk of the gameplay these are the writing prompts that are based on you know, various drawings you're making from the tarot cards leading up to your final graduation so this uh, also starts off with some great author's notes talking about some of the uh, history of the dark a dark academia genre and uh how uh uh, it fits into our current cultural space. So encourage you to read through that. Also provides you with some great safety warnings and some content warnings being clear about everything you will encounter in this book. Uh, so what is Tangled Blessings here? Give you a description. I already kind of laid it out for you, but you take on the role of a student in a mysterious magical academy for adults. Uh, and you are finishing your last year and you're about to face your rival in this last exam and you are going back and you are remembering what happened in the prior four years so it sets you up where you know you can kind of think of it in the cinematic cinematic way where you're about to start having your final uh, test uh, but then you're having these flashbacks to all the things that led up to that final test and that encounter so a uh, nice way to make the narrative flow here um, start with the uh, you know where you're going let's see how we got there and um, there are some role-playing tips here so this is good if you are new to role-playing games gives you ideas of how to uh, tie some of these pieces together and this may be you know for people who have not played a role-playing game it can be a very different experience than um, maybe a traditional tabletop game so Good to have some examples here. And then it gives you um, a message from the desk of the headmaster here. A nice little in-character or in-world message really sets the tone for what you are about to embark on in this book. Brackroot Academy, the speaking gems call to you. So in this world, there is this magical item called a speaking gem, and it is uh, and it can uh, identify individuals who have magical capabilities that's how they are drawn to this academy and uh 
it also gives you a nice map here of the academy so it gives you something to turn to for ideas a little bit of uh, geographic space to work with start with your character of course and some good prompts what are your names and pronouns how did you receive the letter from your headmaster as i read this i already had ideas for my character as i was uh, going through this so uh, i'm excited to do a uh, play through of this uh, so stay tuned i might do an actual play uh, later and then how to play you separate your cards into different decks here uh, and i've separated out the magic the uh, major arcana and then the various suited decks like wands etc and then you go through the suits one for each year and you flip three and those kind of help guide you through your story the other thing you get to do is you determine your house assignment uh, and this is determined by picking you know magic the uh, major arcana cards which one through five i don't think i have them organized here one, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. All right, so I'll pull out these five here, and we'll see what house I pull, because I don't want to run through everyone. So, um, all right, the hero font. So, House of Elements, right? The elements are the wildest of the quintet, but they maintain control with the help of the spires. The elements symbolize excess and power, but together they represent the strength of unity. Students in this house often carry one or more of these marks, Cleverness, hunger, negligence. The dorm is under the main school building, but furnished with enchanted windows that overlook the neighboring mountains. So um, I don't want to overuse the word evocative as I do this review, but this gives you a good sense of how it is sparking that imagination as you are reading through it. Gives you also some nice uh, symbols of the houses here to help you with that. Uh, and then you're encouraged, you know, to use these houses to help flesh out other NPCs or flesh out your rival. So you are supposed to also pick a, you know, pick a card for your rival. So let's say in this case, the High Priestess. My rival would be in the House of the Dahlias, which rely on energy and celestial bodies for growth and abundance. So you can think of how you use those dynamics uh, together. And it makes clear here that you and your rival are both prodigies. So it's centering you as the uh, hero or the protagonist in the story. You are not just a regular student. There is something special about you uh, as well as your rival. And then uh, on your rival list here, you match the Roman numeral of the Magic Arcana to the number on this list. And this gives you a sense of what your rival is going to be like. So if I pulled from this other pile I have here, the tower. Uh, that's going to be, oop, I went too far. Silent Observer. Your rival offers a quiet, yet an imposing nature looming in the back of classrooms and hovering by the wall during activities. When called upon or required to provide a demonstration of their understanding, however, they excel with unfailing grace. So it gives you a good, um, again, good descriptors that are specific, that give you something to work with and build upon. You get to choose your specialty within this and now it sets out your um, sequence for what you do so I'm going to do an example here so at the beginning of the year you draw three cards from the Magic Arcana deck so let's say that I shuffled these a little bit more completely than I'm doing right now one two three uh, and then you flip over the first main, first minor arcana card. So I got a three. And then I read the prompt associated with that card. So year one in Ron's three, I'm going to see a terrifying exam had you spending late nights alone in the library. What were you studying? Which ghosts haunted the study session? What lost mysteries did they carry? Were you afraid? So again, getting not just into, um, you know, one of the powers of writing is you're not just getting into that physical description. You're also getting into the mental state of the character as you're writing these out. Uh, I love that it's doing that in this prompt, 
opening that up for you. Um, and again, like there's a ghost in here, so I can flip back to this ghost generator, generate a ghost or some ghosts for this prompt. And then you'll do that two more times, two more prompts for each year, and then those cards get set aside for the final encounter at the end. You also will be drawing cards for your rival, so I'll do that as well. And you're setting out sort of this deck for the final challenge, which is going to be yours and your rival's deck uh, for the final playthrough. So this continues for the um, next four years. So that kind of sets out, I, I think you can understand now what the rhythm of the game is. You're drawing these cards, getting these prompts, uh, and journaling, however you would like to journal. Uh, but in between the stories, there are these little interludes. So you have a break between your first and second year. How did you spend your downtime? Did you miss access to magic? Did you remain at the academy? What did your rival do? So uh, these interludes, there are different ones for each year, and they do get a little bit darker. <laughs> so this is the second year. You have these strange dreams. You find a hidden rotunda. What, 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 what did you find hidden in the rotunda? Was it a door? A person? Another great idea. All right. Um, after you get through those four years, you get to take your final exam. So again, I'm not going to go through the whole final exam here, but I wanted, what I want to do is give you an example here. So you've built your deck, your final exam deck and your rival's decks through your four years. And there's four parts to this test. You draw a card for each one. So for part one, the deck of wands, spells and curses. Let's see what happens. You each pull a card off of the top here. Um, and then you look at the values. So I got a three. My rival got a king. A king is, or um, uh, The king is worth 13. So I lost that first round. So now I get to go about describing how I lost in this uh, test of spells and curses with my rival. And uh, one of the ways that you're supposed to, one of the things that you can lean on if you're looking for inspiration in this, uh, after you draw your prompts, and I, and I forgot to mention this as you were, as you're playing through your, um, your years, when I pulled out this card and read the prompt, I'm also encouraged to pull an arcana card, a major, a major arcana card, and use that as inspiration for my reaction to the prompt. Um, again, I don't think that would ne be necessary. Uh, you could also use your own oracle deck if you had that. Uh, but it's nice to be able to use these arcana cards and encourages you to use you know, less abstract cards so you can search for inspiration within these cards. Uh, not just using the cards themselves, and it gives you examples, you know, not just using the cards, but perhaps your emotional reaction to the cards to help inform your prompts. All right, so then you would continue through, you know, that, out, that uh, final test, comparing scores, and then you get to your outcome. Because there's four, it's either going to be a lose, a win, or a tie. Uh, and it gives you a final prompt here. You can read them quickly if you want, but I don't want to do spoilers, so I'm not going to read exactly what happens because there's some nice little tags at the end of this. And then it ends with, where does your magic take you next? So, And then finally with a little um, uh, thank yous and notes at the end here, along with some Arcana meetings, so again, helping you out with that uh, Arcana inspiration. So that is Tangled Blessings, a, a wonderful solo or duet journaling game. I, I did not mention how this operated in duet fashion, but uh, you are set up then as you and your rival are going back and forth, pulling cards, describing what uh, is happening during the prompts, and then you ask the other player, what did you do in that situation? So it's becoming this collaborative uh, historical storytelling of your time at this academy leading up to your final 
your final test together against each other. So that'd be a really, a really great way to spend uh, a night with one of your friends, especially if you don't have a GM. Sometimes the GMs aren't there and it's nice to have these sort of GM less options available. And I'm happy to carry this and um, a growing collection of solo and duet GM less options at my shop, Tabletop Bookshelf, uh, along with these wonderful tarot cards here. So these are the original tarot. These are based on, I think you, probably the most recognizable images of the tarot. Uh, so you can get these at Tabletop Bookshelf. Uh, we are a tabletop role-playing game store. We are independent online. We really uh, like to support crowdfunded projects and independent publishers like uh, Mothwin Productions. Uh, we're happy to spread the word of all this great work with the scene. And we hope that if you like this, you uh, support us. You can check out the shop, buy some things there, uh, and sign up for our newsletter. We always have deals and uh, new things coming in regularly. Uh, and if you want to see more of this, please like and subscribe. And that's it for tonight on the TTRPG Flip Through. Thanks, everyone.